This is a short mini lesson on the rhetorical strategy of asking rhetorical questions in writing. The bulk of this lesson was created by Chris L. and Mary Ann C. And they did an awesome job. So by the end of this presentation, you should understand what rhetorical questions are, um, why and how an author uses them, and maybe be able to spot them in practice. Let's get started. What are rhetorical questions? Basically, rhetorical questions are when in a piece of writing or questions in the text that the author does not intend the audience to actually answer, which would be most questions, since most pieces of writing um, aren't asking for a response, right? Uh, perhaps if it's a letter, the author may expect us to actually answer the question. Otherwise, most questions you see in writing that um, aren't asking you to write, literally write a response are just that. They're rhetorical questions. They're questions that have a different purpose. They're not really intended to be answered. They're intended to make you think, maybe to get a specific point across or something like that. So why does a writer or speaker use rhetorical questions? Well, so it's, it's so that while an audience is searching for an answer in their head, the author can actually give them the answer that he or she wants to give. Nine times out of ten, when you see a rhetorical question being asked in a piece of writing, in the next few sentences, the author will immediately have answered the question they ask. Now, an author could choose not to put a question in there, and instead just to directly tell us what they think and feel. But an author uses the question to make us feel like we're asking the question, even though we're not until they wrote it and we read it, right? We weren't already asking that question. They put that question in our heads so we feel like we're participating more. We feel like we're asking that question that we want the answer. And then they very conveniently give us the answer that they want to give us. So we feel like we asked a question and we're being really smart. But in fact, they gave us a question to ask and they had an answer waiting for us. They don't really want you to ponder the question deeply. They want to just give you their answer. A great example is here. Um, you wouldn't want to hurt your children, would you? Of course not. Then you then shouldn't you buy them a PS3? This question is rhetorical because most normal people would, of course, answer that question. No, I don't want to hurt my children, right? In fact, most of us, this question wouldn't even arise in our heads. So it's interesting that that is what the author asked. That's a rhetorical question, right? Um, and then notice that right after the question, it gives us the answer. Why didn't the author just choose to say, um, I know people don't want to hurt their children because this question makes us feel like we asked it. Okay, um, And then notice another rhetorical question here. Then shouldn't you buy them a PS3? Well, they've already told us the answer that they want us to hear. Right? The, the question itself here is giving us the answer they want us to get, right? Then shouldn't you buy them a PS3? They could have, the author could have said, buy them a PS3 and they'll be happy. But phrasing it in a question is a little softer and a little sneakier at getting the audience to agree with the point that they're making. Here are some more examples. In a situation where a friend would run into a girl, making them both fall, and then the girl would remark to the friend, are you crazy? Again, this question is not meant to be seriously answered by the audience, right? It's not meant to say, they're not really asking, oh, are you a crazy person that belongs in an institution? No, it's just saying, are you crazy? It's a rhetorical question. It's not meant to be answered. In fact, instead, what is it saying? It is saying, you are crazy right it's in fact s suggesting that the audience uh, um, is crazy that the person that they're saying it to is crazy but in the form of a question it doesn't come off as harsh it's also easy to spot rhetorical questions because obviously you're going to be looking for questions being asked so you would look for question marks now not 
every single question is a rhetorical question, but uh, most of the time when you spot a question being asked in something like an AP prompt that you're being asked to analyze, um, if you spot a question being asked, that is probably a rhetorical question. Okay, So for example, in this prompt, you could read through it, and when you came across a question mark, for instance on the second page here, let's zoom in on that. When you came across a question mark, you could be pretty certain that this is a rhetorical question. For instance, this question being asked here, what can we do to free our consciences? Is it the author's goal to make us actually stop reading and start thinking about what possible solutions we think uh, might work here, how we could free our consciences? No. They're wanting us to just simply uh, hear the answer that they want to give us. So you see they ask, what can we do to free our consciences? And then they immediately follow that with their answer. There is one line of action by which we could do much. They didn't want us thinking of a, a many, several different lines of action. They just wanted to tell us their one, right? And then here it is. Here's the answer. We can enlist the working men on behalf of our, of our enfranchisement just in proportion as we strive with them to free children. There it is. There's what they wanted us to get. That is how a rhetorical question works on an audience. Hopefully, you better understand how rhetorical questions work and why they're being used after this presentation. They're very easy to look for and spot when you're analyzing something, so keep an eye out for rhetorical questions.